From the kindergarten levels I was at in having uh, seen the horrendous errors in our national document, and with his amazing, I mean, just absolutely amazing academic research, he gave me great hope that I wasn't the only one seeing these many unbiblical issues with our national uh, document. Okay, well, um, uh, what do I what do I say here, Dwayne? <laughs> um, we minister, as uh, Dwayne has already said, out of Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. I've been here um, somewhere between 20 and 30 years. God has allowed us to start a ministry originally known as Mission to Israel Ministries. We have a website uh, devoted to that. And then in the last uh, probably three years, I guess, we have also started a ministry known as Bible Law versus the United States Constitution, um, we have a website for that, Bible Verses, Verses spelled out, B-E-R-S-U-S, uh, BibleVersesConstitution.org, um, by which uh, you can find much of the material we have available um, regarding that particular subject, and I think that's what we're going to be discussing tonight. Um, I have also written a, a 565-page book uh, in which... Uh, I take the Bible as the standard, particularly God's moral laws, His commandments, statutes, and judgments, and examine every article and every amendment of the Constitution by that standard. Um, ironically, um, to my knowledge and, and everyone else that I've spoken to, it took 224 years after the thing was inaugurated um, and brought into existence for here, for America, for, for the United States. Um, for someone to finally, uh, and why God chose me, I don't know, other than he chooses the foolish and the weak and, and such as me. But uh, regardless, it took 224 years for someone to finally examine the Constitution by the standard, by God's morality, the, 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 the standard by which everything must be, including the Constitution, examined. And it is so ironic that... that uh, not only have Christians promoted this document as a biblically compatible document, as a Christian document, as and even sometimes as a divinely inspired document, uh, not only have they done that, but they've been the biggest promoters of this document. And uh, the fact is, um, and, and if you're new to this idea, this will probably shock you, but the fact is um, the United States Constitution was the worst thing that ever happened to America. Um, there is nothing that has gone wrong today that we don't all know about, whether we're talking about infanticide, whether we're talking about sodomy, whether we're talking about the economy, whether we're talking about Obama or the or the or his, his compadres in Congress, that cannot be laid at the feet of the framers for their failure to establish government and society upon God's law. Um, his morality in particular as found in his moral triune law, his commandments, statutes, and judgments. 
that cannot be laid at their feet for their failure to establish government like their forebears did in the 1600s, um, where we really find our Christian heritage. Um, that's not their fault, and, and therefore we find ourselves teetering precipitously on the precipice of moral depravity and destruction today. Um, and so that's what that book is about, is examining every article and amendment by the standard. We also have a, for those who may not be aware of this, I realize that 565 pages of this type of book is a little bit much for the average person to maybe jump into right away, so we we reduced it down to an 85-page primer as well, um, where that deals with, uh, I think, five or six of the articles and amendments that are the most uh, important ones to deal with. So we have that available, and anyone interested can go to our, that doesn't have a copy, um, we will provide a complimentary copy of the 85-page primer to anyone who goes to our website, BibleVersusConstitution.org, um, goes to the, if you go to the right-hand sidebar, there is a, uh, a link to our Constitution survey. And it's just 10 questions. If you'll participate in that, provide your mailing information. We'll provide you, um, as a result of that, a, a free copy of the 85-page primer. And, um, oh, and by the way, um, the, the 565-page, the, uh, the entire book that deals with all of the articles and amendments is actually all online as well. So um, you can download it right from there uh, from your own computer. Um, all of my books, I think, except for one and the the um, the curriculum that we recently came out with for the primer, uh, are also all online as as well. Anyway, that that kind of maybe gets us started there, Dwayne. Um, um, uh, if you have any more particular questions or anything else you want me to share regarding that, I certainly may can. start by saying that, first of all, anybody who understands and, and uh, comprehends um, what the framers have done to us um, and that intend to take it to others, they need to first prepare themselves for what you initially described, and that is not a necessarily positive reaction. Um, as I mentioned to you on the phone earlier today, and as I know you know, Duane, and probably they know your people here know as well, but idols die hard. Um, and this is probably the biggest, I mean, not that we may not personally have our own idols to deal with, and all of us do, of course, but as far as nationally, there is no bigger idol than the United States Constitution, and people just automatically are going to try to protect it. It's a, it's, it's a knee-jerk reaction. Um, and if you think about it, um, how what a tough job we have before us in, in Acts chapter 19, for those familiar with that chapter, um, uh, it says that when, when they recognized that Paul was bringing down the goddess Diana, that the Ephesians cried out for two hours, great is Diana of the, the Ephesians, great is Diana of the Ephesians. For two straight hours they did that. And that's 
for me, that was like, wow. I mean, these guys are serious about their God. May Christians maybe get that, that, as serious as they are. But with that in mind, do not overlook that it's been 225 years that Americans, and Christians in particular, have been crying out, great is the Constitution of the Americans. Great is the Constitution of the Americans. So, as amazing as it was for them to do that for two hours, how much more so for 225 years? And it really tells us what a job we have before us. And as far as that job, we've only we've just begun. We have just begun. And so, and I... And I uh, something else that needs to be understood. Somebody, and hopefully somebody's, uh, and I already know there's Dwayne's doing it, and there's there's others as well. But somebody's got to go through the abuse of taking this thing on. You've got to be prepared to take it on. And somebody's got to take people through that paradigm shift when it's the worst. And right now, it's at its worst because um, we're just beginning. But the encouraging thing is that we are at, and I think I, we spoke a little bit of this in, the, in the, the last time I was on with you, Duane, and that is that we are at the greatest, what I believe is the greatest paradigm shift at the very beginning, but the greatest paradigm shift um, America has ever seen, other than possibly when the Puritans and Pilgrims came over from, from Europe um, in the 1600s. But I think it's probably even going to be something even much greater than that. But we're just beginning at this, um, and so somebody's got to take us through that. Now, let me give you, and I don't know that I did this. I don't know even know if this was the. I don't. In fact, I don't think this was the situation yet. But to to, to reveal, to maybe help us see that we are at the beginning of that paradigm shift. That things are happening. As I mentioned before, it took 224 years for God to find somebody as dumb as me to uh, decide so he could get all the glory to, to write a book that examines the Constitution by the standard, his law. But within a two-year period, two other very significant books also came out after mine, one of them by Gary North, which we may have spoken about previously, um, which is called Conspiracy in Philadelphia, the Broken Covenant of the U.S. Constitution, um, a book about as large, uh, pretty close to the same size as mine. And by the way, we also carry that book on our on our book list for anyone interested. In fact, I think I'm the only one that's even carrying this book at this time. Um, you can also get it through Amazon. Um, Gary Norris approaches it not so much from a biblical standpoint, although there's lots of Bible in it, but more so from the philosophical where these framers were at in their mindset, the influences, the Masonic influences, the, the Enlightenment influences, and all of that, and shows and reveals. Um, it's, it's like a second witness to what we now know from the Scriptures where the Constitution falls short. However, that wasn't the only book. Another book has come out since, I think, again, we last talked, called The Religious Beliefs of America's Founders, Reason, Revelation, and Revolution, by Greg L. Fraser. Greg Fraser is, um, Dr. Greg L. Fraser is professor of history at the Master's College in California. I first uh, found him through an interview that Dr. Albert Moeller conducted with him about, I think, two years ago, um, that I had gotten a link, 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 link to from someone, um, and I thought, oh great, here we go again, he's gonna, he's gonna, we're gonna get another guy that's gonna promote the founders as some great Christians, and I didn't read but two paragraphs and I dropped my jaw, and I thought, finally, somebody's approaching this in a balanced fashion, and, uh, the interview is still available if you Google Dr. Albert Moeller's interview with Dr. Greg Fraser. Um, you'll be able to find a link to that interview, um, and I highly recommend that you do so. And then it will also give the means by which to order Dr. Fraser's book. Dr. Albert Moeller, by the way, if you don't recognize that name, and this makes it even more amazing to me, is uh, he is president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, and all the more reason why I thought, well, we're just going to get the same, same old, same old from these two guys as you always mm -hmm. get. But what Dr. Fraser has, uh, 
did was he took the right, he finally took a balanced approach, didn't cherry pick them, you know, both sides cherry pick them, and one side uh, makes them secular uh, humanists and uh, the other side makes them Christians. Well, he didn't cherry pick them, he took a balanced approach to their to their writings and proved that they were neither deists in the purest sense of the word, but nor were they Christians in the biblical sense of the word. So here's three books, Dwayne, that, that came out all within a two-year period after 224, 25 years. That, I mean, my goodness, that has to point to the fact that we are at a very important, exciting time, regardless of the views that may come from this. So where do we go from here? All I can say is that this, you know, um, let me say it this way. Um, some of you will recall that when uh, when Dr. Dobson retired from uh, Focus on the Family, that he basically said that we lost the culture wars. And he's right. We have at this point. Um, and the reason being is because guys like Dobson, as good as he was at trying to do what he was doing, and some others, they only hacked away at the branches of the corrupt tree. Um, nobody was cutting it down at its roots. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna, you know, whenever we've got a corrupt branch in front of us, you know, that's right there in front of us, whether it be infanticide or sodomy or whatever, we need to hack away. But until we cut this corrupt tree down at its roots, um, that tree is gonna just keep sprouting new branches. And that's why we've lost the culture wars, because nobody's taken the time to deal with this. Um, at its roots, and the roots is the biblically incompatible, seditious constitution of the United States of America. That's why we have all the branches we do today, because the framers failed to establish government society upon Yahweh's morality as found in his laws. And therefore, I don't, I don't know a lot of specifics to tell you guys, but, but just to say, hey, this needs to be at the forefront. Um, I, on our web page, some of you already may be familiar with this, but our our featured blog article is found on the uh, right there at the beginning of the uh, on our home page for Bible Law Bible versus Constitution dot org. Um, it's five reasons why the Constitution is our cutting edge issue, and uh, if you look at particularly number three, all five are important, but number three really spells it out, and it's something that you might want to take advantage of and use to open up the door with some of these people. Um, it's a hard door to open, but we just got to keep pounding away until, and we're, and we're making great headway. Um, we're not, it's not by leaps and bounds, but I can tell you every day we're making headway in one fashion or another on this, and it's going to be a snowball. Um, you know, with guys like Dwayne and and some of the others that are involved in this, praise God, I mean, we're gaining people that are involved in this battle more and more all the time. Yeah, and especially I like the way you just put it, because I was about to say that, you know, the Constitution is not the issue. It's just the means that we've got to deal with. It is it is the cutting edge issue and what needs to be, it's the national idol that must be taken down in order for us to establish Yahweh's kingdom 
in a fuller sense based upon his laws. It's just the, we've got to deal with it, and it is also a means to highlight God's laws. We want we want to bring glory to the king, and we want to further his kingdom, not just destroy anything opposed to it. You know, if we do that, there just ends up being a vacuum that's going to be filled by something just as bad or worse. Um, that's why the Tea Party has no answers. Um, you know, in the short run, they may look a whole lot better than, than the rest of the Republicans. Um, but they don't have any more. Ultimately, they have no more answers because they're promoting the genesis of our problems as the answer to our problems. And very few um, are pointing to God's laws as the answer. So so that's the ultimate idea here. It's to, it's to, it's to bow the knee to our king and to confess with the tongue him as Lord, and uh, to promote his kingdom based upon his laws. That's what we are about. So this is just a, a tool and a means to be able to hopefully try to accomplish that more and more every day as we serve him. Wow, that Wow, that's great. Great. Thank you. Those are the kind of little succinct things that we need to, you know, those are, and you're probably better at it than I am, Dwayne, but coming up with those kind of questions that set people back on their heels um, and that opens the door, cracks the door open a little bit. Those are the kind of things we, we really need to, to use and have available to us and then then have the tools to back it up, you know, with books and CDs and messages and, and things like uh, like this, what we're talking about today. Well, I think it's possible. Um, I would like to believe that. Um, you know, my when you evaluate where this country is and you evaluate it in light of how many people there are in this country that are, including the vast majority of what calls themselves Christians, are so far removed from what we find in the Bible, um, God's kingdom, his laws, um, you know, basically what we have in America today for Christianity is Matthew 5.13, salt that's lost its savor, good for nothing but to be trampled under the foot of men, and that's what's happening. Now, the good news in that is that a good trampling tends to bring back the saltiness, and I think we're starting to see that. Um, however, um, you know, the practical side of me, um, knowing where we're at, and knowing that we're just at the beginning of this paradigm shift, I don't see if there's a reformation coming. I think there is. Um, but I don't the practical side says it's still a long ways away. That said, we also know God's timetable isn't ours, and that he can speed up things dramatically simply by major judgment upon this nation. And everybody believes there's, I mean, if, for no, if from no other quarter, from what, what we, whatever you want to call them, the scoundrels and the 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 idiots and the, the downright criminals that we have inhabiting the halls of Congress, whether state or federal, um, everybody's going to say, hey, we're under judgment. And I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, God fulfills his word. He's, I mean, we should get excited about what we see happening in Washington, D.C., in our state capitals, because it says God is true to his word. He makes idiots of them. You know, at some point, he makes literal idiots of them. Um when they reject him and his laws. He's, he's promised that time and again. So, um, and judgment, I mean, the judgment we're seeing is only minuscule, I think, to what we're going to see. And in fact, I expect his judgment, um, one good blast from, 
from the volcano underneath Yellowstone alone, uh, you know, or however God intends to do it. And he may not intend to do this, but I think the, when judgment finally hits this country, it's probably going to take out two-thirds or more of, of the population. And, in fact, I think that's probably what has to happen. Um, Yeah, and so, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, yeah, this, something's happened. Not only from the fact that we're finally dealing with the national idol, our father's idols, and our, our people's idols, and Christianity's principal idol, um, like we, like it's never been, never occurred before that I know of here in America, um, and the fact that the other side has become such idiots, and, and, whether they see the Constitution for what it is, and most don't, but they're able to see that these got, uh, we're, we're destroy, those people are destroying America. So that sets up the perfect storm, if you will, um, for us to take advantage of and go forward, and uh, for this to happen much quicker than, than uh, we may anticipate. And I think I shared this with you, you guys before, that... I have to admit, it's going, it's still minuscule. We're still such a small remnant. But I have seen things happen in the last 15 years regarding all of this. Well, probably the last 10 years, maybe even less, that I never expected to see in my lifetime. Doors that have opened. Now, I have been attacked here just recently by some of those same people, but uh, doors have been opened to me and, and the opportunities that have been beyond my wildest imagination. So, Things are progressing much quicker than I thought, but it's still, practically, it looks like it's still a long ways down the road before we take dominion is what I'm talking about. And by the way, that's if you'll for anyone who's not familiar with that, if you go to the bottom of our homepage at BibleVersusConstitution.org, um, there's a Hailing Kingdom Ambassadors, and uh, we're trying to gather up men to take over these blogs um, with biblical answers. Is the whole point of that? And it's all explained there. So I'm dealing with with a lot of uh, uh, blogs and articles and things, trying to always counter them with biblical answers, and it's really a blast. Um, because if you've got God's law as, if, if you're not depending upon your opinions, there's always an answer to everything that somebody counters. And one of the things I deal with time and time again is that very 
point that we're not stated quite the same way. A lot of people say, well, we're a republic, we're not a, we're not a theocracy. Um, and, um, I'm not sure what page it is on, but in, in chapter three, um, which is entitled The Preamble, We the People versus Yahweh, um, I point out there that there is no escaping theocracy, that a government's laws reflect its morality, and the source of that morality, or more often than not, immorality, is its God. That, and therefore it's never a question of theocracy or no theocracy, but whose theocracy? And the American people, by way of their elected officials, are, um, in, uh, in this case, are the source of the Constitutional Republic's law, and therefore the Constitutional Republic's God is we the people. Um, laws reflect morality. Morality reflects a God, one way or the other, either the true God or some other God. Um, you know, what we have today in we the people is just a contemporary, contemporary form of Baalism. Baal was, wasn't real. What was, so what made Baal effective? Well, it was the laws of we the people um, behind Baal, or Ashtoreth, or, or Molech, or whatever God. It's always the real God, the living God, and his laws versus we the people, regardless what you call them. And so it's always a theocracy. Uh, it's ridiculous. You know, if, 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 when you understand that the principal means by which we keep the first commandment is observing Yahweh's other moral laws, um, and that idolatry is not so much about statues as it is statutes, um, you know, it becomes clear or apparent that all government are theocratic. Um, Serving either the God, the, the true God, or some false God, demonstrated by the laws they keep and consider the supreme law of the land. Baal had his supreme law of the land. Molech had his supreme law of the land. And we're just, you know, in modern days, we, we got more bold. And so we called him We the People. And he's got his supreme law of the land. And so it's a theocracy um, represented in the God We the People. So it's amazing. I mean, that is that. I run across that probably more than any other argument that I run across. That's the argument I run across. Yeah, and Red's a great man, and he's, he's, his heart has been in the right place, as have so many others. But um, the time comes when you got to say, oh, wait a minute, I've, I've, I've messed up, I've been bamboozled. <laughs> Um, and and uh, these guys have been taught to think that the the Constitution is a biblically compatible document, and just nobody ever thought. You know, I think I pointed this out before as well, but that Christians so desperately want those framers to be our guys and want that document to be our document that nobody bothered to say, well, let's examine it and find out. Um, or let's examine these guys' lives like uh, Dr. Fraser has now. And you all of a sudden you say, "Oh, wait a minute! This thing not only is not biblically compatible; it's a biblically seditious document." And you know, it's because these guys have for so long been promoting it as a biblically compatible document. You know, boy, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, and we got to we got to be patient. You know, and some people may say, "Well, Ted, you're the last one to talk about him about patience." Because I, I don't give, <laughs> I'm dealing with this all the time, and I don't give, you know, I'm patient, I'm, but I'm not going to allow for lies to be told. Um, and so I, I look like I'm on the attack all the time. Well, 
with where we're at, that's what it takes. I just got to be careful about how I do it. So do all of us. Actually, um, of course, I, first of all, I came out of a, a Christian background that was antinomian. Now, for those who may not be familiar with that term, <clears throat> the word nomia is the Greek word in the New Testament that's translated law in most instances. Um, so antinomian is against God's law um, under the New Covenant. Pronomian would be for it or somebody who is for it. I came out of a background that was antinomian, which is of course, the vast majority of, of what's called Christianity today. <clears throat> and uh, so when the epiphany for me was that God's law, which reflects his morality and his everlasting righteousness, um, the epiphany was when, when I saw that God's law has not been done away with under the new covenant. We're not justified by it. By it. Our justification only comes through Christ. But we certainly, he certainly hasn't abolished his morality, if, he, if God abolished his morality with Christ, then he essentially abolished himself, because his morality, his everlasting righteousness, is his very essence. And what we have in his triune law, his commandments, statutes, and judgments, not the ceremonial or sacrificial laws, but in his triune moral law, um, we have a reflection of who he is and what he expects of it. And so when I saw that, wait a minute, God's law has not been done away with. Um, I can't tell you the exact moment, but it really wasn't a great epiphany that, wait a minute, there's a problem with the Constitution. I remember a conversation early on with another pastor who had also had the same epiphany about God's law, but he was he was promoting the Constitution, and I just sat there. I didn't say much. And maybe that was the moment. I just thought, no, there's something wrong here. Um, and for the same reasons and others that you mentioned, Dwayne, that, you know, uh, God, Christ, uh, Yahweh's morality, his laws, none of that is mentioned. The only mention of, of Christ is perhaps as, as the paper's timekeeper in Article 7. My goodness, if that's all it is, and that's not even for certain, um, they left God and Christ and his laws and his morality completely out of the entire document. So I, I didn't, it was just like, oh, it's almost innate with me to know that it just wasn't, it wasn't there. And I did, um, several years later, I did, I responded to a, to Pastor Chuck Baldwin's, um, you might be a constitutionalist if position paper, which, uh, with a, and this is online as well, both um, in audio and also I have a written copy, written version of this, uh, called You Might Be a Christian If, where I took his points one by one and, and dealt with them from a biblical standpoint um, and showed where he was wrong. And when I got done with that series, um, uh, a parishioner came up and said, you know, you ought to, de- you ought to do a series on the Constitution itself. Um and uh, that planted the seed. Um, and within a year, I think, I'd started the 30-part series, Bible Law versus Constitution.
Oh, a long time ago. You know, the Pronomians should have done this and figured this out a long time before I came along. Um, but again, that just that's in God's timing, and He it just points to the fact that we are at a very exciting time here in America, because that idol is we're finally finally starting to. It's not coming down yet, but we're chipping away at it. Finally, somebody um, are, is chipping away at it. And like I said, we're gaining we're gaining adherence all the time. We need to get more people more actively involved in it. You know, for the sake, if not for ourselves, then for the sake of our posterity. It makes me, Dwayne, it makes me think of Hezekiah. As much as I love a lot of what that man stood for, when God judged him for opening up his storehouses to the Babylonians and told him what was going to happen and said that, you know, I'm, I'm going to spare you because you've been a godly man. I'm paraphrasing, of course. He says, but this is going to happen to your children. He said, uh, and he praised God, you know. Basically, he was saying, at least it ain't going to happen in my day. Um, what a sad commentary on, on a father. Um, same with this guy. And, um, you know, I don't think that most of America is too far removed from that. I just want to say that, uh, um, again, every, almost all of my work, except for just a few, are online. Um, you know, I've written, I think, over 25 books, and all but one and the curriculum for the primer are online available. Anybody can access them and download them right from there. If you can't afford the books, then by all means, uh, take advantage of that. It's always been our policy. If you can't afford it and you'll use it, you can still have it. So um, you only need to let me know of your situation, and I'll send you what you can, you can use. Donations, of course, are always appreciated, and I know that Dwayne can use that as well, and uh, he's offering these DDDs, but don't forget that that cost him money, and you should be reimbursing him when you can as well. Um, we've um, just, uh, you know, you just we just got to take this, and and uh, if it doesn't quite fit your style, then take whatever it is that we've got that's useful and adapt it, and, and uh, you don't have to give me any credit; you know, just give God the credit for it. And we just need to put our put our hearts and mind we need to put our feet and hands to where our hearts and minds are hopefully already at and get busy for again for for the sake of the kingdom for the sake of our god and the sake of our posterity Ted Wallen, ladies and gentlemen remember that name it's going to be a big one someday in the, in the, in the annals of the father's records so i'm glad we had you ted not brad Pitt. anyway <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to explain that to him. Blessings to all of you, and uh, Dwayne, we'll talk again here soon. Blessings, Ted, and thanks very much again for being with us. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>